In this tutorial, we will create an electric LEGO animation in After Effects using the free Saber plugin, which you can download via the link in the description. With that said, let's jump to the tutorial. First, I'll create a new composition, name it Render. It will be in 1920 by 1080, 30 frames per second and 6 seconds for the duration. Click OK. Then drag your logo to the timeline. Press S on the keyboard to adjust the scale if needed. I'll leave mine as it is because it is nicely in the center of the composition. So once you adjust the position and the size of the logo, right click on it, select Precompose. I'm going to name this Precomp Logo and make sure Move All Attributes is checked, then click OK. Now while the logo composition is highlighted, go up here to Layer and select Auto Trace. And these are the settings that I'm using to trace the outlines of the logo. Here, if you have Preview on, you can see exactly what you're creating here. So click OK here. Then press U on the keyboard and that will reveal the mask layers that have been created. So 17 of them in my case. And we also have the keyframes for each mask path, which we don't want to see. So I'm going to drag and select all the keyframes here and press delete to delete them. That will declutter our future steps and make it a lot easier to work. So I'm going to collapse that, then open effects and presets window and search for Saber. Then add Saber effect to the logo composition. That's how it looks by default until we change one setting in effect controls. Open customize core and set core type to layer masks. As we do that, the saber is applied to the mask layers that we've created earlier. And that is too intense. I'll drop the core size to one so you can see exactly what's happening here. Here you have uh, presets. You can see a, uh, there's a huge list and each one gives you like a different and unique look. You can go through each one of those and test them out. But here we are creating the electric logo. That's why I'm going to select the arc reactor preset and you can also select the electric preset but in my opinion arc reactor looks more electric so i'll choose that one i'll set glow intensity to 30 just to decrease the glow a bit then i'll set the glow color to a bit of a lighter blue so something like that and i'll leave the rest as it is now move the time indicator to the start of the timeline first i'm going to set the start size to zero percent to create this kind of tapering I'll create a keyframe for end offset and set it to 0%. Then I'll also create a keyframe for mask evolution. Right, I'm, I'll move 2 seconds forward. Then I'll set end offset to 100%. I'll move to the end of the timeline. Set mask evolution cycles to 1 or you can set this to a higher value if you want the animation to be faster. Now I'll move 2 seconds back from the end of the composition. That would be 4 seconds. I'll create a keyframe for start offset at 0%. Then move back to the end of the uh, timeline, set start offset to 100%. Yeah, by doing that, we get the stroke reveal at the start. Then we have this like constant path animation. And at the end, we get this out animation, right? And it starts from the end, not from the start. And that looks very, very nice. And after you've created the, uh, the animation, you can select the logo composition. So highlight it, go up to edit, duplicate, or press Ctrl D as a shortcut. I'll rename the bottom one to Reflection. Now I'll right click on the Reflection layer, go into Transform and select Flip Vertical. And we don't see anything happening. That is because we need to change the modes of these layers. So click Toggle Switches on Modes until you see the Mode column. And set both layers Mode to Screen. And now we can see the Reflection layer. So I'm going to select the Reflection layer and drag it down below the logo. Then press S on the keyboard. First uncheck the Uniform Scaling and set the second scale value to negative 50 to squash and distort the reflection layer. Then further position it something like that. Now I'll press T to bring up its opacity, set the opacity to 50% to, to create some contrast between the like actual logo and the reflection. Then I'll search for directional blur in effects and presets. Add this to the reflection layer, set direction angle to 90 degrees and blur length to say 50, again to further distort the reflection. After doing those, we can uh, create the floor layer. We can easily do that by going into the layer, new solid, name it floor. Then we're going to search for fractal noise. Add fractal noise to the floor layer. Here I'm going to set noise type to block, contrast to 200, brightness to negative 25. I'll open transform and set scale to 75, just to slightly decrease the, the blocks. Then I'll set complexity to 3, and that should do it. Uh, now we need to place the floor below other layers, like, like that. We need to click toggle switches and modes until we see this column and make the th floor layer 3D by checking the box here. Then press R for rotation on it. 
set X rotation to 90 degrees. Then drag on this Z handle and bring the floor down. Place it uh, in such a way that it covers the reflection layer like, like this. Then search for motion tile and effects and presets. Add motion tile to the floor layer. Check mirror edges here. Then increase the output width and height in such a way that we don't have any gaps in like this uh, bottom area of the composition. And after doing all those, right click on the floor, select pre-compose. Again, name this floor, make sure move attributes is selected, then click OK. And here you can hide the visibility of the floor layer from here. Now we're going to create a new adjustment layer. So click on the layer, new adjustment layer. And we're going to place this adjustment layer in between the logo and reflection layers like this. Then search for compound blowing effects and presets. Add this to the adjustment layer. In blur layer, we're going to select the floor. And as we do that, we can see the, the textures of our floor appearing. And uh, you can play around with the maximum blur, so you increase it or decrease it. I'll leave it as at 20 because well, I like the look of it. We are also going to search for CC glass effect. Add it to the adjustment layer. Open surface. Bump map, we're going to say to floor. Then we're going to set softness to 0. Height to 5. And displacement to negative 200. And the CC glass effect will give our floor a bit more depth and texture as you can see. And that's that. Now we can create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. Make sure it is at the top of all the lay layers. And we're going to add directional blur to this one. We're going to set direction to 90 degrees and set blur length to 500. Then to click toggle switches and modes until you see the modes column and set the top adjustment layers mode to lighten. And that'll create these horizontal rays or streaks of light. that look very nice. And if it is too intense, you can uh, select the adjustment layer, press T for opacity, and set the opacity to 50% to kind of darken down, down those rays. And uh, here, the animation is almost done. We need to add a camera now to like create the zoom in animation. So we again, go up to a layer, new camera. I'm going to select the 35 millimeter preset. Make sure these settings are not checked, then click OK. Now we need to make the layers 3D, so click again, click toggle, switches and modes. And we're going to make the logo layer 3D, check the box, reflection layer 3D, check the box. And the floor layer inside of this composition is already a 3D layer. So all we need is check the continuous rasterize icon for the uh, floor composition. So check that one. And uh, now you move the time indicator to the start of the timeline, select the camera, press P for position, create a keyframe for position, and set, it, set the Z position to negative 2000. Now I'm going to move to the end of the timeline and set it to say negative 1600. And that will give us the constant like slow zoom in throughout the scene. And we can top this off by adding a background. So again, layer new solid, name it BG and place it below all other layers. I'm going to search for gradient ramp in effects and presets, add it to the BG layer. Click uh, swap colors. So the black is at the bottom. Then I'll select the start color and choose something that would match the scene, maybe like this dark blue. Click OK, and here we can do the preview. And that's our complete electric logo animation created in After Effects with the help of a free Sabre plugin. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new in this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.